What's going on guys, it's Jeremy, and today we're going to talk about some basic considerations when setting up your rifle. Alright guys, happy St. Patrick's Day, hope you're wearing green. In today's video, we're going to kind of talk about, you know, some things to consider when you're setting up your rifle, whether you're a beginner, whether you've been around a while, you know, there's always something you can learn. But first, guys, as I said in my last video, we have been completely taken off of Instagram and all social media. This fucks up my plan. This is fucking bullshit. Okay? This, these fucking assholes, this fuck, these fucking assholes! The fuck is their problem, man? This is fucking typical! So, make sure to like and subscribe here. Go check us out on our website and in all of the links to our YouTube videos and on our website, you can find our Telegram link. You can keep up with us, probably the best there until I figure out the social media uh, issue that we're facing. But let's talk about rifles. So when setting up your rifle, whether you are, you know, first time buyer, you know, you want to build on your collection, you know, you already have your rifle, you have to consider what is the purpose of the rifle? Because, yeah, a general do-it-all rifle is, is a thing. But there's always, you know, that top priority or that consideration that you're uh, thinking about when it comes to setting up your rifle. And that helps you figure out a lot of the features or more dynamic uh, things about your rifle that are going to help you when building it out. You know, you know, what is the purpose of your rifle is going to help you with barrel length, you know, the type of optic that you're using, and all of those different types of things. So let's talk about rifles themselves got a couple of them here so we're basically going to break this down into three parts we're going to talk about lower receiver we're going to talk about upper receiver and then we're going to talk about all of the fancy attachments so starting with our lower receiver there's really not a whole lot going on um, your mil spec lowers are, are pretty much the general gist of the market and then you have your aftermarket up, uh, upgrades so things like your uh, buffer spring your trigger uh, and that's really about it, your pistol grip. Uh, there's something on the market now, which my friends absolutely love, called the bad lever, which helps with sending your bolt home. Uh, so lots of things to consider there. Trigger is probably one of the things that people consider upgrading way too early. People don't become proficient enough with their rifle with just that standard trigger. Uh, and I think people need to kind of take a step back and really master the fundamentals before moving on to the trigger. With your buffer tube, um, I normally run just general standard buffer uh, buffer tubes or buffer springs. Some people like to get into it and get a little fancier. It does help with like recoil management, a lot of things like that. It just depends on what your cup of tea is. Running, you know, a lot of standard parts is usually my go-to and it's it always works out fine for me. However, some people have a little bit of extra money than everybody else and they like to get fancy with it. So lower receiver, extremely simple. Now let's talk about the upper receiver. So obviously the upper receiver we have, the receiver itself, our bolt carrier group, our charging handle, our rail, our barrel, and then our muzzle device. So let's uh, start from the front and work our way back. So our muzzle device, again, something that is going to be very dependent on, you know, what you are setting this rifle up to do. You know, on all of my ARs, I have the dead air silencer muzzle device because it accepts my dead air silencer suppressor. Um, a lot of rifles just come standard with A2 flash hiders and, you know, some people like the war comps or all those types of things. Again, one of those upgrades that I don't think is a, is a very big priority. Nonetheless, it is something that is beneficial and you should do your research into what your muzzle device is doing that you're trying to accomplish and does it help you. Then we get into barrel and everyone always asks, what is the best barrel length? The answer is there is no best barrel length. Um, you know, the, the AR platform is just such a versatile weapon in a sense, specifically for the civilian um, or professional. And there is no best AR length. Um, you know, you'd be engaging, you know, longer distances, those four to 600 yards. You know, you'd be hunting, you know, boar, you'd be out in the woods or, you know, in the mountains. You could be doing CQB and vehicle operations and home defense, whatever that may be. So your barrel length is really going to, going to differ. Um, you know, the standard legal uh, barrel length before you have to get uh, unconstitutional SBR stamp or a, put a pistol brace on it is 16 inches. And you can do a lot with 16 inches. 
That's what she said. <laughs> you can accurately engage good distances with a 16 inch barrel, or you can room clear and do all that kind of stuff with it. Is it a little, is it a little bit of a pain in the butt? Yeah, but it's doable as long as you train and you should train. So barrel length going to be dependent on what you want to do. Kind of more of a reason to uh, get two AR, to get a long boy and get a short boy. Or grow, you know, whatever. I don't, I don't discriminate. Uh, moving back from the barrel to our gas system and uh, our gas tube. So our overall gas uh, system has a lot to do with the functionality of the rifle, obviously, and then recoil management and all that kind of stuff. I am not super technically proficient when it comes to the gas system. Nonetheless, you should always invest in a quality overall gas system. You know, don't, don't, that'd probably be one of the biggest things I tell people not to poverty pony it on is your gas systems, uh, because that is kind of the working horse in a sense of the actual rifle itself. Then we get into the back of the upper receiver. We have our bolt carrier group and our charging handle. Um, I think ambidextrous charging handles are really good or at least extended wider charging handles. Um, I personally just like it a lot. I like having that good wide space to be able to rack it whenever I need to. The, the standard muzzle, uh, I'm sorry, uh, charging handles, a little, little too small for my liking. The bolt carry group is another big thing, another big portion of that working horse that makes this rifle you know, go bang is that bolt carry group. And that, that is another thing I tell people that's probably where you should put most of your money in the grand scheme of things when it comes to the individual parts is your bolt carrier group. A good quality bolt carrier group will take you uh, a very long way. Um, I have a Bravo Company uh, uh, bolt carrier group in this one, and this is an 11 and a half inch bolt carrier group. So let's start talking about you know, the attachments to this rifle. So optics. Optics, of course, are going to be very dependent on what you see yourself doing with this rifle. You know, general red dot or holographic um, optic is always going to be a very good go-to no matter what you're trying to do. If you're trying to shoot, you know, those two, 250 yard shots or, you know, you're doing your CQB, uh, LARPing in your mom's basement, whatever that may be, good go-tos. Uh, pairing it with a magnifier, I think this is one of the best things that has come out on the market is pairing these magnifiers with red dots. LPVOs are great too. And I have an LPVO on my Daniel Defense. This is the primary arms one to eight. A lot of people are like, oh, you put a primary arms in a Daniel Defense. This LPVO is an absolute tank. I have been running this for well over a year at this point. And I take it, the woods with me, it gets thrown around, it goes to range days, it gets thrown around in the truck. I mean, like this thing is a workhorse. I love it. But benefits of the LPVO, obviously able to get that more magnification for a longer distance shot, but you can also engage at that 1X. Your sight picture is going to uh, be a little bit different though uh, than your red dot or your holographic sight, obviously, just based on where your eye relief may need to take place between an LPVO and then a red dot or holographic that may be mounted closer towards the front. Nonetheless, LPVOs are very good tools. I, I do think that upgrading and putting a red dot of some sort on my LPVO was a very good choice um, when it comes for those like 15 yards and in engagements. Definitely something I suggest everybody does. Uh, let's talk about sling real quick while we're right here. So, Having a sling obviously is important because you need to be able to keep that weapon to your body. You know, you don't want to be just dropping this all over the place and whatnot. So I use Blue Force gear slings on all mine, probably just the Marine in me because that's just what I always used when I was in the Marine Corps. Um, I also really like Magpul's, uh, the MS-1 slings. Your sling placement is going to be obviously a little bit dependent on how you like it. I like my slings um, in these QD spots in the back of what comes in most rails now. Some guys like to mount theirs all the way towards the front. It really just depends on your preference. And you should always make sure that you size your sling to your body on, based on how you would appear or how you would be uh, conducting yourself or con conducting things with your rifle, operations, home defense, LARPing, whatever it may be, um, to how you're gonna be set up. If you're gonna be wearing kit, you should size your rifle sling on you with kit on. If you're not gonna be wearing kit, do it without kit. 
So just something to consider. Flashlights. Flashlights should be an absolute standard when setting up your rifle. You know, half of our lifetime is spent in the dark and you cannot engage what you cannot see. So flashlights should be an absolute go-to, specifically if you are doing the stereotypical thing and building this uh, for, you know, your standard home defense. A lot of break-ins happen at night. A lot of break-ins happen during the day, but a lot happen at night. So make sure that you're able to see in the dark for whatever reason you may find yourself using a rifle. They should be an absolute go-to. Um, and use name brand flashlights. Do not be a person that buys the $16 flashlight off of Amazon and basically find some jinky way to connect it to your rifle. Buy a good Streamlight, a Surefire. There's a few other big brands out there that you could use and then properly attach it to your rifle. And then, I guess we'll go back to this rifle. One thing to consider is IR devices. As night vision becomes more popular with civilians, IR devices come with them as well. And this is just another one of those price tags that kind of comes with getting into the night vision field that a lot of guys don't think about. And there are becoming some more uh, affordable options out there like this Hollow Sun. Um, I don't have a huge amount of time underneath it at this point in time, so I'm not going to do a rating or review of it in this video. Nonetheless, it has decent quality so far, um, and I am pleased with it for the price tag. It was a lot better than dropping $2,000 or more on an IR device. Um, when this fits my needs at this current point in time. Other than that, guys, that's really about it. That is your rifle. So again, consider what your rifle is for and build your rifle around the purpose in which you see yourself using it. If it's just for home defense, you know, a basic red dot, a sling and a flash and a weapon light will do you just fine. If you know you're in the professional side or you're in that, you know, civilian defense force, Minuteman mindset, you know, step up and do the things kind of mindset, build a sturdy rifle, buy quality parts, and you know, really understand what it is your rifle is capable of. Um, don't get caught up into the, how should I say it, uh, the internet trends. Um, and just change your rifle all the time. Find a purpose, stick with it, build it out. That's all I've got, guys. You can find us on our website. Find more information about us in the comments down below and the description. Like I said, we're kicked off Instagram, and that really sucks. I'm trying to navigate that field at the moment. Nonetheless, we're going to keep pressing on until I can't press on any longer. So, train hard, train often.